In this episode we continue our steel and our quickwire production setup and use the brand new parts to complete a whole bunch of milestones. Yo, hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play series of Satisfactory. In the last episode we tackled multiple factory sites and actually got lost in between of them without finishing all of them but only the quartz site. And today the scope is to finish the steel factory first because I want to have this as a priority for progressing further in the milestones. And then we want to finish quickwire right away. Um, right after the steel factory. I also picked up some sulfur in between last episode and uh, yeah, found more a little bit so we should have enough in order to research it in the MAM. And yeah, after letting the steel factory produce a little bit in the background while doing other stuff, we should be able to progress or complete some milestones as well. Now I've been busy in between episodes a little bit and I messed up big time last episode because I said I wanted to get some quartz stuff, some quartz items that we produced already in order to pick up some cosmetics and build the factory a little bit neater. But um, yeah, let me first show you what the current status is. And you see a lot of concrete but no windows or no other stuff whatsoever. And this is because, let me show you really quick. The windows need steel beams and we are not producing them yet. So that's even further reasons why our steel production should have absolute priority because yeah, otherwise we would only be able to build up some major concrete buildings or squares or cubes, yeah. And I want to get rid of that as soon as possible. Now, what I already did is put up some, yeah, some walls and uh, I will replace them partly with frames and windows once we have them and also laid out a little bit of the conveyor belts because yeah i don't want to um, waste too much time showing how i pull conveyor belts everywhere but yeah we will lay down the machines all together and we have the three coal miners all getting merged here at one bus and feeding into our logistics floor I also changed the default color of um, the yeah the secondary default color a little bit. I made it a little bit more golden, and yeah, I'm working with this until further notice. So yeah, I want to just check it out. And here we have our pure iron node. Still no miner, but the I actually have to drag the conveyor belt here as well. And wait. And there is our last minor tower with the impure node and the conveyor belt is already dragged here, yes. So this is our logistics floor where everything will be fed into regarding ore and um, yeah, basic resources and then we will work with conveyor lift floor holes in order to switch in between the floors and this will be our construction floor and i also already planned a little bit ahead and tried a layout i tried some uh, layouts with the foundries and constructors that's necessary and i decided to do as follows now we are using one, two, three, four, five, and six foundries on this side. And then we are starting from the other side with one and two. Now that's eight foundries in total. And I decided to split them 
um, onto each side. So these are all necessary in order to produce 67.5 steel beams. And these two are the only ones that are needed for 60 steel pipes. And we have to, yeah, work with floor holes for the logistics in order to get up the ore and coal to get down the ingots and then um, yeah we are bringing up the ingots for the constructors some meters further and yeah I was in originally intending to put them all in one line and then I would have the possibility or would have had the possibility to switch a little bit with the production outcome because one of the constructors for the steel beams will be underclocked to 50% and if I would need more steel beams in the future I could simply clock this to 100% normal rate and shut off one of the three constructors that will be producing pipes completely and the necessary input would be still the same so yeah it would be another loading balance but I figured eventually that the even the Mark III um, conveyor belts are only capable of 270 um, transports per minute which is not enough for all the 360 ingots that are coming out here in total so it would have been a mess out from hell um, rebalancing all these conveyor belts so I decided ultimately to settle with this layout and to let it be and if there's further demand in the future I will either have to wait a little bit or increase the production with a further location with a further construction site. Yes, this is the general plan. I'm always having the habit of jumping around too much and yeah, this is what I get for it. My apologies, let me climb up really quick again. And yeah. Oh, I just noticed I could already have laid out the floor holes while talking. Now, everything needs two inputs. And then one output on the other side. And also, since these six foundries are producing 270 ingots in total, um, once we will get access to Mark III logistics, this will be the perfect yeah, load balance and um, we will get use of the Mark III logistics at a 100% rate. Now, these are only requiring 45 of each no or so mark one is sufficient and same goes for the output 45 45 45 wait is this oh this is actually not necessary so let's Safe on some reinforced iron plates. Perfect, okay. Mm, now, how much space do I want to leave? I think I will leave two foundations wide um, just to be sh safe. I haven't fully figured out the logistics layout underneath. But yeah, better be safe than sorry. We already had some minor issues with not letting enough space on other sides. And I just realized I have to cut in between here. So these three will produce pipes and then one, two, three, four, five will produce beams. There's even more space possible. So we have more room to roam around on this floor as well and this should be good let's do some more con bail lift floor holes so we maybe just one further 
or closer. And yeah, then we will be able to see exactly from underneath where all the conveyor belts have to be. Now even though on the back side of the constructors the conveyor floor hole is clipping a little bit or soft clipping and turning yellow, um, this won't be visible in the end and yeah I used it in the past like this so in my opinion it looks just fine and if we move it once one further away in my opinion it doesn't look that clean. Let me demonstrate the difference. Yeah you have this little rubber tube and in my opinion this is not necessary and this looks just way cleaner so yeah I will just move these as close as possible and yeah this is wrong I don't know how that was even possible change to output again and the last few now this is wow uh, mm, do I even want to feed these way uh, below again I will think about this later because yeah there's no real need to feed the final product underneath um, because we want to pick it up anyways but let's just leave it for now okay now what we can do with the input for the foundries is one two three four five four okay we have to work with conveyor bells on this height and then maybe like this Let's, let's see how it looks with splitters. I think it will... Yeah, the coal will come from the right side anyways. And the iron might come from the left. And just to see, yeah, this is clean, and so is this. I think that's uh, how I'm gonna do it. And then on the output, this only needs to be one line, so I think I will drag this down to the bottom. And then I will do one straight line for the beams, one for the pipes, and then feed it with a turnaround back into the constructors and I think I won't need the output to be fed again down here. Okay, um, yeah, let me handle the conveyor belts really quick and then I will come back to you in a minute.
Alright, and this is the conveyor belt floor or logistics floor completely finished. I have to admit I struggled a little bit with the logistics of the coals, but yeah, I finally worked it out. So each of these conveyor belts will eventually transport 120 coal each. Again, keep in mind this is already laid out for the upgrade with the Mark II Minus and the Mark III logistic belts and lifts and so on. So yeah, 120 of coal will be fed into here and I actually forgot the belt here. Um, 45 will be extracted, another 45 will be extracted once the foundries will be backed up that is. And the remaining 30 will then run on this belt over here and merge actually with the other two. So 120, 120 equals 240 with another 30 is 270. And we actually can handle this or will be able to handle this once we upgrade this belt with um, up to a Mark III and the following ones on the line as well. And then yeah, we have the remaining 270 coal transported up the up there and each lift will extract 45 to each foundry and then we have the iron ore coming from here getting fed up to here um, this will be 240 and then yeah i have to upgrade this to mark 3 as well eventually and then yeah this is only looking from the um from beneath, like it's running the wrong way around, actually this is just how a conveyor belt works and it's displayed in this game as well. So yeah, 240 iron will be transported up to here and then on this point we actually have to set a merger instead of a splitter because from this side there will be 120 iron coming minus 45 minus 45 and then another 30 have to travel up to here and here the 30 wait a second 90 180 270 yes this will contain 5 or 15 Wait a minute, 45 times 5 is 225. Yeah, this will contain 15. Okay, so it's correct. I was I was messing around, oh, I was um, confused with the numbers. So this will be a remaining 15 iron ore. God damn it. And from the other side, there will be another 30. So it evens out. Yeah, and uh, another mistake that I made is This is actually an impure node and I was always considering to get this 120 out of the bottom, uh, out of the ground, but it's actually only 60 or it will be only 60. So I have to overclock this. Um, I was, yeah, thinking about maybe getting this one up to here instead of the other one, uh, instead of the impure one, but then I would have to move the whole tower and underclock this to 50% and in my opinion it's not worth it. Instead I will invest the two power shards for the overclocking and have another pure node completely available for other stuff. Now I also already prepared the power lines and dragged power all up to here which is not connected yet though because I want to show the final results and all that's left now is to connect I have the wrong hotkeeper to connect everything and setting down 5 minus now yeah, since we only have Mark Two, uh, Mark One minus at the moment, um, there will there won't be any issues 
regarding overload or something whatsoever. But yeah, the most important thing is to get this place up and running. Um, yeah, now that I have to alternate between power and conveyor belts, my hotkey bar is messed up a little bit. But this is all three coal nodes set up. I will also put some roofs on these tunnels and on yeah I still have to finish the production floor but not now now this one has to connect and once this place is completely closed um, with roofs the power lines will also not be visible anymore from the outside so it will have a clean look and yeah once I have access to other stuff from the awesome shop regarding cosmetics and so on I will also do something else with um, something else than concrete walls only No, it also fits like a glove. Connect this one here. Yeah, and why not already overclock this? I left these gaps everywhere in the in the walls um, so I can add some doors later on, which I don't have yet either. But yeah, for now, this has to do, and this is also basically um, still on construction anyways. But as I mentioned, the most important thing is to get the steel production up and running. Now all that's left to do is to connect the machines above with the power lines beneath and the miners. So. It's actually not possible to set up the wall poles, or how are they named? Yeah, the wall outlets um, to the ground, only to ceilings and walls. So, yeah, originally I was always setting up some double wall outlets and then feeding a wall either, uh, a power line either straight through the ground or on the outside of a building and then back in on the next floor but I want to try something else what I what just came up my mind since I have power poles at the construction floor um, because I haven't added walls there yet where wall outlets can be put on I want to connect a power line and simply basically soft clip it through the power pole itself as well as the ground and this one can connect to over there and now everything should be connected. Eight foundries, seven constructors, no eight constructors actually, as well as five miners. Yes, this was already hooked up altogether with a consumption rate of 160 and now we added five miners so it's 185 without showing the overclocking <laughs> what I haven't done yet is merging the output the final output of the constructors and I think I will feed them into the center of the room so that we will have two are these god damn it so that we will have two storage containers right next to each other and
This one can be Mach 1, but why not doing Mach 2 here? Because we are exceeding the 60 items per minute again as total output. That's not the case here though. All that's left is to put down some storage containers. Mm. Maybe here. And maybe here. This, like that. Okay. That should be everything completely hooked up. I didn't have the recipes checked steel beams on this side much of a mess with the conveyor belts already usually you can simply run along and copy and paste the recipes but when everything is surrounded by conveyor logistics already then it's a little bit of a mess um, although it's much easier with the logistic hidden one floor below then you can access the machines much easier. Now, done. All that's left is to hook everything up to power. And then, although not at 100% efficiency, we will produce our first steel beams and steel pipes in a minute. And now we should see our first green light in here. Let's jump down really quick. Yes, you already hear it working. There's the iron. Come on. everything lit up check the other side and there comes the coal all three belts will be fed up iron is arriving as well so let's jump up really quick and watch the machines coming up to life although we don't see the steel ingots up here because we feed them back down straight away we still can see the first machines turning green and active. I'm getting impatient. And of course, the moment I go down, it starts. And there we go with our first ingots. Again, this is only a small fraction of the efficiency because we are on mark 1 minus and so on and so forth but yeah it's still nice to see that something is happening let's check here the first ingots are arriving
and the first constructor is producing. And there is our first steel beam. Now, what about the pipes? Some action here as well. Very nice. Okay, that's good. We finally have this up and running. It was about time. So it's not finished, but still let's toggle this off the to-do list and yeah this will take some time um, and we need already 200 for the current chosen milestone um, 200 of the steel pipes although it is picking up some pace but yeah this will take a while so I will leave this running in the background and focus on the next point which is our quick wire factory so let me run there just really quick and I will meet you there okay now here we are back at the Caterium site and in the meantime I already hooked everything up to conveyor belts and to power and dragged another power line from the two coal generators all up to here so yeah without further ado let's do not waste any more time i simply hooked up the smelters to one long conveyor belt which will then turn around eventually now because we have to research the ingots first i hooked up a storage container i will pick them up for the research and after we unlock the recipe for the quick wire i will change this conveyor belt to um, this line to connecting this line for the constructors where the quick wire will eventually be made and all that's left is to hook up the power and in a few minutes or seconds hopefully not that long the first caterium ore should arrive from above there i changed the location of the ladder as well and yeah the cosmetics i will do in between this and the next episode i will add some um, structure here we'll make this a little building with a tunnel for the conveyor lift and because we are already producing our steel products for frames and windows and stuff um, i can turn this into a nice, nice little building soon but first let's get this production up and running let me just check really quick if i hooked up the miner to the lift no i didn't no wonder why there is nothing coming out and here we have our little golden caterium ore oh 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 oh, oh. ouch this side the same is valid um, as for the quartz and for the steel production this is still running at a maximum of 50 percent efficiency due to the mark one miner but as soon as we have enough steel pipes and steel beams backed up for the re uh, milestones then this will be doubled up as well and the first smelters are already up and running and here we have our first little golden caterium ingots now let me put up a man really quick so that we see how much ingots we need 50 this shouldn't take long already have 10 yeah and uh, also as already mentioned the Caterium output has to be split into two different uh, conveyor belts since we cannot keep up with an output of 400 per minute. 
But yeah, this is exactly split into 200 quick wire per minute, which will back up into two different storage containers. And this is basically basically all that will happen at this place for a very long time. Because yeah, we have to do further research in order to unlock um, other products which require quick wire and will be more advanced. But yeah. I will come back to this once we are at it. Okay, we almost have our 50 ingots. Only a few more. And 50. Okay, let me change this conveyor belt really quick before I forget it take this container as a whole and do the research for new shop products as well as the recipe for quickwire. Now we have to do some quickwire for the next research but first we have to insert the recipes we just got and yeah as already calculated 12 ingots will be crafted into 60 caterium in each of these constructors. Only the last one has to be underclocked a little bit because the output is not sufficient. But yeah. For the start it's only 50% anyways, but now you can also see already see it running out quite fast. Yeah, and at the start here the Caterium ingots backed up a little bit because it's a consecutive conveyor line running, starting here and running all the way out there. But yeah, Caterium uh, is crafted into quick wire very fast. So we almost have 100 already. 100. So let's take a look. Yeah, Caterium electronics will be unlocked in 3, 2, 1 done. And these are basically already our first few more advanced products. We cannot unlock this one because we also have to dip into oil in order to unlock plastic but later more to this. And the Mark II power poles are very handy because yeah you can hook up seven power lines to this um, this is basically done already as soon as we have enough quick wire and you already saw that we are producing quite a lot per minute. Also some power switches and once I have the first AI limiters I will directly unlock the smart splitters because with that you can um, access overflow from a production as soon as a storage container is backed up and the items are backing up into the machines then you can uh, lead out any overflow and for example turn it into an awesome sink or lead it into an awesome sink and produce passive coupons which will be desperately needed and I think I will set this up um, yeah in all construction sites possible as soon as we have these but yeah I will prepare every items um, at least the quick wire in between so we can Take a look at this together. Now this is our quick wire site up and running as well. So now that we spend a little bit of time here let me head back to the steel factory really quick. Take everything with me that is produced there already and then we can finally unlock the First are the milestones that are desperately waiting for us and start with the advanced steel production for the upgrade of the miners and also the Mark III logistics later. So yeah, let me run to the steel production really quick and then I will meet you at the bases. And here we are back at our tiny little headquarters. Might be that I will move this a little bit further into the desert in between episodes because yeah, we are building more and more advanced um, production sites and we will 
repeatedly need the output of these so it's not really helpful to have this at the very edge and always run back and forth but yeah now um, before turning on the record again I checked what we can do and we actually can now complete three out of the four remaining milestones of tier 4 all at once so let me just take the active milestone and feed in the first needed products for advanced steel production which is 200 steel pipes we also had um, backed up a thousand of each steel pipes and steel beams already which is very nice so this is going quite smoothly and yeah we will double up the rate as soon as we have this milestone completed now let me pick up some more wire and some more concrete really quick One, two, three, and more wire. One, two, and fold again. And put this all in. Now, so that we don't have to wait for the space pot to come back, let's also fit, feed in 200 steel beams. 100 modular frames, whoops, some cable and more concrete. And last but not least, we need more concrete. Good that this is backing up all the time. And 200 more steel beams, 100 more pipes, and 500 concrete. Okay, let's start with the advanced steel production because it's the first in the line. Milestone reached. Logistics can be improved with a larger storage container, enhanced conveyor belt efficiency, as well as the ability to store excess power for later use. An additional project part can now be constructed. Further progress to the next phase is now possible. Yes, this is a bunch of new factory streamlines already needed, um, as well as the Miner Mark II available. Next up, the second best of these uh, four tiers or milestones, the Mark III Logistics. Milestone reached. Logistics can be improved with a larger storage container and enhanced conveyor belt efficiency. As well as the ability to access or to store excess power. I don't know why she stopped in the middle of the sentence. But yeah, this is also great. Now we have the Mark III conveyor belts as well as the lifts and can also put... Um, Storage containers double the size behind each factory line so that we can store double the amount. I could also yeah, only uh, put two small containers right behind each other, but um, yeah, this will come in very handy uh, while still looking clean. And the third one and the last one for today is the blueprint designer. Okay, no voice line triggered, but no problem. So, we have a bunch of more stuff to play with and a whole lot of more streamlines to build up. Now, first of all, we have the upgraded minor version. Then we can build industrial... Let's, let's take a look at the codex directly so we can see what we need for this. So, the versatile steel framework is already upgraded but this is a project part that we have to put up um, yeah I don't know if I will do this manually or and set up an assembler with storage containers behind it and feed them in manually but yeah we will need loads of this later on as well so it might also be logic to build up a factory for this now the first one for today 
or the first uh, new recipe of today from this milestone is the encased industrial beam which adds concrete to a steel beam and then we have this one and as you might remember we have a limestone node right next to the steel factory that we just set up so we can simply add another miner tower and add in concrete into the equation so we also have an output of encased industrial beam which needs 30 per minute and 24 steel beams so yeah after this backs up for a little bit um, we might change the um, production line a little bit so we also have encased industrial beams because we will need this quite often as well next up is the stator which requires steel pipes and wire um, and I think there was also a copper node right next to the steel production which is great as well and then we have the motor which combines st uh, rotors and stators not only do we are we able to produce stators right away at our steel production site but there's also another untouched pure iron node which we can add to the line in order to yeah set up a rotor a streamline and combine these right away into uh, yeah so that we have a motor factory quite easily my only concern is that we split off too many steel pipes and steel beams from the original production so that we will know uh, that we won't have any leftover left but yeah i will have to do some calculations before starting the next episode and do some planning as well now we have the automated wiring which requires stators and cables yes yeah, stators already explained quite easily and cables are straightly produced out from uh, copper and the only difference to the status is that we further craft wire to cable and then we can do automate, uh, automated wiring. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, I'm sorry. And this is another project part and with this we have all the recipes necessary to complete phase 2 as soon as we set up a factory. Now we only need a hundred of them and they get produced quite easily and fast so yeah, might not be necessary to put up a factory for this now, right away but I will think about it as well. And last but not least, we have our first manufacturer recipe, the heavy modular frame. And for this, we need actually four input items, the modular frame, steel pipe, the encased industrial beam, and some screws, many screws actually. And then we will have the heavy modular frame. And this will be necessary quite often in the future as well, so a production line for this will be mandatory eventually. Um, do we already have the manufacturer available? We don't. We only have the recipe. Now, yeah, so we don't have to worry about this just right now. So the first thing is to really um, yeah, consider what to put up next because there's so much to do and yeah before starting the next episode I will do some planning but let me toggle off the milestones really quick and then we come to the last point of the to-do list for today which is the research for sulfur and this actually will do um, unlock another yeah, necessary item or more necessary production lines for us to do. Because now we have some more recipes that we can unlock, um, as well as another tree for experimental power generation. And I do not have the required modular frames for that. Now we do need some more coal. Do I have some left over here? No, I don't, but let me simply run to the miners really quick for the power generation site and pick up some coal by hand. I 
don't know if there's anything stored up here. I think it gets transported right away. Yeah, basically. But I only need 25 or so. I think it was 25. Yeah, and this is just the start for the Sulfur Research Tree, but um, it's also good to see what's coming next. And yeah, we will have a lot to do in the future. So for, yes, enough coal for the research of black powder. Because now we have the recipe for black powder. Um, and can craft it in order to, yeah, then unlock something else, which is a detonator as well as some bombs called Nobelisks in this game. And yeah, another research for more hand equipment slot and so on and so forth. It will get more complex uh, further down the line and we also have something else here. But, yeah, I have to pick up more stuff in order to be able to um, research this and that will do for now. So, yeah, I will heavily consider to set up a production for encased industrial beams in the next episode because it's the very last item that we need in order to complete the tier 4 regarding milestones. But we also need to set up two more productions for completing phase 2 in general. But we also need to set up several more construction lines in order to have items available. And yeah, I don't know where to start first, but I will think about it a little bit. And then I will come back to this in the next episode and we will address one topic after another. And now that we have the Miner Mark II available as well as the on Veyo Belts Mark III, I will not only do some cosmetics in between episodes, maybe set up um, a building here and there and finish one, because we finally are able to put up um, windows, window walls and so on, because we have the steel beams finally available and they are backing up consistently in the background. Um, so we are not limited to, yeah, simple, pure concrete cubes but we can do more and more complex stuff and more and more um, appealing buildings. So yeah, I will do some of this in between the episodes as well as upgrading all the productions and also reorganizing the very first production lines that we did. For example, this iron production here, as well as the ones for um, rotors, reinforced iron plates and smart platings and also the modular frames because there I did not consider the upgrade for the Mark II miner and there we have uh, we will have double the output as well but I only started planning ahead like this at the quartz factory and further but not before that so I have to reset this a little bit and yeah um, so that we make use of the further output and what I also will do is double my coal generator site at the water um, where we produce our power. Not that it's necessary right now, but just because I can and we can also upgrade the coal miners um, right over there as well as the ones that are co close to the uh, coal generator sites as well. And then we will have double the coal output, so why not use it since the nodes are, yeah, set already or um, already in use so yeah let's just double up the output and double up the coal generator amount so that we will have double the power available later in the future because yeah if we already settle this now we don't have to worry about it later so this is the plan for in between the episodes and right when i will have settled for a plan for the next one, I will come back to you and share it with you so that you can follow along. But that's going to be everything from my side for today. Thank you very much for watching again. And as always, if you have any feedback, uh, feel free to share it with me. It would be appreciated. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.